Welcome to Reminiscing with the History Bakers, a video series where we meet our senior and life members and celebrate their accomplishments. Today, we are here with Mark Spross, the second vice president of ABCO. Good evening, Mark. Hi there. How are you? Uh, doing great. So first, tell me, when did you join ABCO? Well, so first you say senior members, and gosh, I'm not sure I'm ready to embrace that yet. But with that said, uh, I joined back in 20... Uh, I'm sorry, 2001 is when I joined, yeah. 2001. During your tenure with APCO, tell us what agencies you worked for, the positions you held, some of the responsibilities of those positions, and then the length of your service. Certainly. So uh, let's start with the last one first. I've been in public safety for a little over 32 years now. Um, through that time, I've really been blessed to, to work in the incredible state of Oregon. Uh, I started uh, down with Douglas County Communications, which is actually where I was uh, born and raised. I started as a dispatcher down there. Um, had an opportunity to, to move up to the city of Eugene, and I worked with them as a, a telecommunicator for a few years. Uh, and then I had my eyes set on kind of taking a different path with public safety. So I went, uh, went back down to Douglas County, uh, where I worked as a, a deputy for just under six years. Um, and then decided, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that uh, to somebody else uh, and went to go work for Clackamas County, which is located in the north part of the state of Oregon. So Douglas County is kind of near southern Oregon. Clackamas is up near, I guess, the city of Portland, Multnomah County, for those that might know where that is. Worked in emergency management for a short amount of time, and then an opportunity came up to be a supervisor with Clackamas County Communications. Uh, and so I worked there for... Um, almost 18 years uh, and I worked. So at Clackamas is probably where I had my most experience in different administrative positions. Prior to that, uh, it would be a dispatcher or a coach. Um, and then when I went to Clackamas, I had the opportunity to work as an operations supervisor, uh, a technical manager, an operations manager. Um, and then I also started working um, uh, part-time uh, teaching at our academy in Oregon, so Department of Public Safety Standards and Training, and I was an instructor down there. And then I had the amazing opportunity to be asked to be the director of my current agency, which is Metcom 911, located uh, in Woodburn, Oregon, which is just outside our state capital of Salem. That's an amazing amount of experience right there. So describe what drew you to join APCO. Was there a particular person or an event that was influential to getting you to join APCO? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. It was probably a combination of both. Uh, initially, when I had come back in as a supervisor, I knew of APCO, um, but really not a ton about it, uh, about what it really was. And at our state level, um, you know, we, we had a really involved chapter. So my manager at the time, I said, hey, you really need to go and be involved in this organization. Uh, and, you know, the moment I got there is when I started to meet people. Um, started to build those relationships, and APCO became truly a critical part of not only my advancement, but my, my career of understanding what our industry is. Can you describe some of your APCO activities at the state, chapter, or national level during your tenure? And what was your favorite thing? Oh, gosh, favorite thing. Well, uh, let, let me do the easy things first. So I've had an opportunity to work on several of our, our state committees. Um, initially, it was the technical committee and the training committee, uh, and then I had the opportunity to um, do a little bit of work with our legislative committee. I'll come back to this, that in a second. Uh, and then as the years kind of progressed, I had the opportunity to uh, uh, hold all of the positions on our, our executive board. So uh, the vice president, president, past president, um, et cetera, uh, which, which really was a ton of fun. Um, I've also had the opportunity to serve as the executive council rep for Oregon. Um, and then, uh, like I had said, the legislative committee, um, you'd ask about my favorite. So I'm going to do that first and then go back to the national. Uh, probably executive committee and the legislative committee are my favorite. Uh, executive committee, just because you kind of serve in that role between APCO International and your chapter, um, it really puts you in a great spot to learn more about the organizations at both levels. Uh, the legislative committee, uh, super frustrating <laughs> to deal with our elected officials. But for me, it was so uh, exciting because I was able to be involved uh, with some pretty significant uh, impacts to the state of Oregon. And probably the one that I'm most proud of is our ability to finally raise 
uh, the 911 tax, which uh, benefits all of our, our uh, uh, 911 centers. Um, at the national level, I've uh, worked on the awards committee, uh, the evaluation task force. I've served as a group leader. Uh, and now that you uh, very nicely mentioned, I, I'm currently on our executive committee serving as the uh, second vice president for APCO International. Yes, and congratulations on that one more time. Uh, has your APCO membership had a direct effect on your career in public safety communications? Oh, ab yeah, absolutely. Hands down um, for a variety of reasons. I mean, probably the easiest that you can sum it up would be um, your networking, the contacts that, that you meet. Uh, there's just so many different people throughout this country that are in our profession um, that never hesitate to help you. So um, along with that comes the education. So for me, um, you know, there's a variety of different classes and the conferences that I've attended, uh, but RPL, uh, Registered Public Leader Program, really made a big difference for me uh, as a newer supervisor. There's just a lot of information um, that kind of encourages you to not only reach out um, across the nation, but to kind of peel that onion on what is available here um, within, within your own chapter or our chapter, for example. Uh, the CPE program, that was also phenomenal for me as I, I continued my path to become uh, more of a leader and a director. Um, but again, those contacts, not only with our commercial partners, but those within our industry, um, I've had the honor of working with some incredible people. Some are still here with us today, some have retired, um, but I never stopped learning from them. And just having that ability to uh, bounce things off of them uh, makes me better, you know, because it's hard to believe, but I'm not perfect. Uh, and, and so being able to learn from them and, and kind of, you know, pivot and recalculate just to try to put your agency in a better light. So. Uh, bottom line is, I, I really would say the networking and your contacts, but also the education that you get through uh, APCO International. What does APCO do better than anyone else? Well, that's a really good question. I mean, again, the easiest thing is, is how they bring us all together for one mission. Um, you know, the saying is, if you've been in one 911 center, you've been in one 911 center. But you know, our overall mission is the same. Our compassion is the same. Our drive is the same. Um, and being able to bring that, our group of people together to share ideas, to learn from each other. Um, you know, I think APCO does a phenomenal job with their training. Um, you know, I'm learning more and more over the years what they do for us at the national level. Um, you know, 911 has uh, for a long time been sort of hidden. And you know what I appreciate about APCO is, you know, we see a lot on the FCC side, but we're starting to see more and more on what their impact is to make our jobs easier. So um, what do they do well? You know, from the local level, I think they help us understand who our, our, our neighbors and partners are. And that's not just us in the industry, but that includes our commercial partners, which I think is very valuable. Uh, and then of course, the training that they roll out to make standards. Um, so we are, moving forward in the right direction. Uh, and then again, finally at the, the national level, just all the stuff that happens you know, on Capitol Hill it, it is amazing. Uh, and, and to see the team that APCO has working for us is just absolutely incredible. I agree. With the advent of next generation 911, what does APCO need to do to stay current with emerging technologies? <laughs> There's emerging technologies? Uh, I think what they need to do is help us uh, corral everything, if you will. APCO is not going to be in charge of that, but I think that they're going to be able to, to set some of the foundation for what we see coming out from our commercial partners. Um, we already have a phenomenal voice with them, uh, and, and that's made through our partnership with APCO. Uh, you know, if you look, at, I mean, at the very basics, look who shows up at our vendor shows. Um, uh, none of those are strangers to our organization. None of them are afraid to reach out, not only in the international or at the national level, but at our local level, to try to help us figure out what we need in, in our PSAPs. And I think that relationship is important. Um, but I think what APCO will help us do again is is ensure that foundation, so we have the consistent interoperability that we need to do our job. Because uh, the more one-offs that we have, the more we're setting up our staff for failure. Uh, and that's the last thing we want to do when an emergency comes up. So 
Um, you know, if I, if I may, I think the easiest way to say that is just their ability to influence our partners in Washington, D.C., to make sure that we have that consistent uh, interoperability amongst all of the technology that's going to come our way. So what stands out as a significant contribution during your time in office? Yeah, you know, I hope that's still coming. Um, you know, when I look back over the years, uh, I, I honestly, I hope that it's mentorship. Um, I, you know, I hope that, and I don't know what it has been or, or what it will be, but, you know, there's been so many people that have provided me that word of wisdom at the right time to put me in the right spot. Um, and, and that's what I hope to contribute. Um, with that said, you know, I've just started my, my, my journey uh, with the executive committee. So I hope that there's plenty of opportunity for that as well. Um, and the others that I, I had kind of already mentioned, you know, for me within the state of Oregon, um, it was that tax increase. That was, that was more work than I ever imagined. Uh, and to see the benefits that have you know, provided everyone within our industry has just been enormous. Um, so, you know, there's little nuggets along the way, um, but probably the one that I, I don't know that I'll ever know is that I truly hope that I'm able to provide what others have provided for me uh, because of this organization. Well, thank you, Mark, for your time and experience today. It's been a true pleasure speaking with you. Uh, this has been Reminiscing with the History Makers. Thank you.